Uh, well, hello folks and uh, welcome back to my mainframe channel. This is Moshix and uh, today we're going to have a very short video uh, because this is uh, all going to be very short and sweet. Uh, what I'm going to show today is um, once you download your TK4 distribution with MBS 3.8, there's a very simple trick to double the throughput of your mainframe and we're going to look on how to do this. It's it's very simple to do. There's no, this is no dirty trick. This is, there's no uh, funny stuff going on. This is just one of uh, one configuration parameter that needs to be changed, and we'll have uh, double the throughput. Now, before we get there, I want to say something about throughput and about performance. Um, and the best way to do it is actually uh, before we start our mainframe is to look at my Linux machine. Um, if I go into the, what you're seeing here on the screen here. Um, into my Linux machine, Linux machine, which is by the way running inside a virtual machine uh, on top of ESX VMware ESX on top of a, an Intel uh, NUC uh, um, or NUC, whatever you want to call it. Um, those tiny little devices. It's an I think an i7 processor. It's quite a fast processor, although only four cores. Um, but it's quite fast, has a nice little, uh, has a nice cache on it, and um, and so what you're seeing here is this um, is this uh, virtual machine running on top of the Intel NUC, and uh, what it, what you see here it has a six gigabyte, uh, yeah, six gigabyte of RAM and two processors attached to it. Now, if we go and check in slash proc in Linux, oops, sorry about this. Um, there is one um, information that the kernel throws out called CPU info. Um, and here it tells me I have an Intel Core, uh, look at the fourth line from the top, Intel Core i7-7567U processor running at 3.5 gigahertz, which sometimes switches up all the way up to 4 gigahertz when on the stress. Now, um, when we th when we speak of th of speed, uh, the speed of a processor is really just the gigahertz. Uh, how many cycles um, does it run per second? And so this processor runs runs at a, as a frequency of 3.5 gigahertz. What it means is that every uh, this goes in the billions of a second. There's an instruction executed. Now, uh, so this is. You know, 3.5 gigahertz is actually the speed you get when everything is in the cache, right? That's very important to understand that processors are heavily cached. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of caching happening. In fact, it's a three-level cache usually nowadays. There's a pro there's a cache on the processor itself, and then there's a less second level um, cache, which is uh, usually instruction and data combined, and there's a third level cache. Um, and you're really running at 3.5 gigahertz, as you can see here, if everything is in the cache. Uh, if, if data is not in the primary cache, it goes to the secondary cache, then you're probably running at something like 350 megahertz because it needs to go get stuff from the RAM. Um, and if you're not even in the secondary cache and you're running, everything is on the bus, you're probably only running at three or four mega gigahertz uh, megahertz so uh, you know we need to be careful not believe everything that it, that the processor manufacturers tell us here you're only running at three at the full speed 3.5 gigahertz if everything is in the cache and obviously um, Intel and AMD put a lot of efforts into making sure that what you need is in the cache but not always uh, you can have everything in the cache Hercules itself is a very complex piece of software even though given the complexity I have to say uh, hats off here to Fish and all the other um, uh, authors of Hercules. It runs a remarkably stable. I've had an instance of, of uh, Hercules running for more than a year now. It's never crashed. Uh, it's never come down uh, nonstop. Many billions of instructions executed over this time and never a problem. But um, it's a complex piece of software and, and a lot of the stuff it does will not fit in the cache. Uh, of a processor. So if you're running it, some code, some program inside MVS 3.8, which is in a very tight loop, it may actually run at full cache speed. 
uh, but if you have multitasking, if several things going on, it may actually not, not run the cache and that will slow down quite a bit. But that's valid for any piece of software. Uh, and Hercules and the MBS running inside Hercules is no difference here. So the speed of a processor is really the, the frequency of the processor and the ability to run in cache. Now, there's a second measure, which is throughput. A throughput is the amount of production or amount of work that uh, the computer is able to run in any given time frame. Um, and so uh, we'll see today how not how to make Hercules faster because that's not really um, I'm not really qualified to do that uh, you can make Hercules faster by buying faster processors with more cash um, but what I'm going to show is how to double the throughput or almost double the throughput of your TK4 instance so having said that um, what I did here is I downloaded a fresh copy of MBS 3.8 which is given away by the uh, code, uh, by the readme file here saying update 8. And of course, as usual, I've gone into unattended and I've done a set console mode because I need the console. Uh, and once we've done that, um, we can go here and start MBS. And so MBS will start up here for the first time and I'll connect a screen immediately here um, to see. Um, how we can get this up and running as fast as possible. So, um, let me see here. Yeah, Jest 2 is already up. And um, you'll see if I press escape here, how many processes that we have. We have one processor, CP00. Um, and 16 megabytes of RAM right now. What I want to show you guys is how to make the throughput faster. And I can do this best if I actually uh, stop this instance here and you should never do what I just did which is actually very good learning here for us on this channel uh, never just yank the power from your from your mainframe which is the equivalent of pressing of typing quit inside Hercules because bad things will happen uh, but luckily it's very easy for us to uh, get out of this kind of situation by just unzipping everything again and by doing that um, we have a fresh Brent, a fresh uh, instance of TK4 installed again. Um, again, uh, let's set the console mode. Done. Now, the trick to uh, double the performance is very simple. We go, once we're in the TK4 uh, directory here, we go into conf, where the configuration file for Hercules is, and you have several um, files in there. Um, we're going to edit TK4. And this file here has uh, two lines we need to change. Actually, three lines. We change number CPU, which is how many CPUs are present. Change this to two. Max CPU is the two. And the other optional change is the CPU model we're emulating here, the 3033, was never able to run more than one CPU. So, uh, so we're going to change that to a CPU, to a mainframe model that had. Um, multiple CPUs and that will be at the time at 3084. Um, so once we've done that change, we go, we save, we go back and now we start MBS, press escape and lo and behold, we have two CPUs running. And one thing that many people don't know is that MBS 3.8 had excellent support for more than one CPU. So, um, it, it actually supported two CPUs very well. It doesn't support any more than that, but that's all we need here for what we're going to do. Um, and so as um, MBS is coming up, again, Jest 2 is up and running already. <coughs> I'm going to show you folks on uh, what the gain in performance is. Um, one thing to uh, also mention is that uh, most of the software that we have in Okay, here it is. Uh, that we have in Hercules. Login as Herc01. Stamp password. Um, let's go to the monitor. And it will mention here we have um, two CPUs available. If you see here, two CPUs. Uh, we can also see it uh, if you go to the management panel. Two CPUs. And every time I press enter, you will see here that it sometimes switches. 
um, and that's based on the MBS operating in at the kernel of MBS deciding each time where any given interrupt is going to be executed and so um, it switches between CPU 0 and 1. Um, one thing we could do here is the um, check the performance um, and let's do one. Oh, I think it's two one. Yeah, so we run at 341 uh, million instructions per second, and that's stuff that would be um, register to register. Obviously, that's always the fastest because you don't have to access the memory bus. And then we can um, test the second one. That's 297. Now, if I remove, if I uh, do a very CPU off, uh, obviously this is not going to change because the, the the speed of the processor is is not going to change with how many processes we have, and right? that makes no sense. Um, however, what we can do is that we are able, uh, and you see it here, um, CPU utilization. We are able now because we have two CPUs to run several more workloads at at the same time and finish them within the same time. So. Uh, before we would have to sequ you know, sequentialize uh, any throughput and it would take probably double, about double as long. There's some overhead in having two CPUs, which I think in MBS 308 is probably about 10-15%. Uh, I've noticed that there's some big locks inside the kernel. I've looked at uh, the source code um, and that's similar to uh, Linux, about, I would say about 90-98-99 when Linux 2.2, when they introduced the first multi-CPU support, they had something called the big lock, which means in the kernel you would acquire a lock and then inside that lock only one CPU would be able to execute and the other CPU was just waiting. Um, and as as with the, with any every progressive version of uh, Linux, they, re, they, they made the big lock, removed the big lock and made much more finer grained lock. And, and any operating system has to go through that kind of effort and making the locks um, uh, more and more fine-grained so that um, uh, as many CPUs as possible can execute at the same time. Uh, obviously, when you're when there's an interrupt and you need to handle that interrupt, all other CPUs need to be locked so that only one CPU goes and gets and fetches the, the interrupt, although there is some interrupts that can be done in multi-CPUs. Um, but the, the, the main gain here is, is, is throughput, one more thing to say is that most um, software on the mainframe that we have from, the, from that time is not multi-threaded. You can write multi-threaded programs in PL1 and I will soon release a video how to show where, where I show how to run multi-threaded, um, uh, how to write and execute multi-threaded uh, software on the mainframe, but most software is not multi-threaded, so meaning that even if you have two CPUs, an address space, an application, an applica an address space will only be able to run on one CPU. But obviously, during that time, you can run a completely different application and will run on the second CPU without waiting for the CPU. And and especially if you have a well-tuned system, where, you, for instance, on my machine here, um, this is running, as I said before, an Intel NUC with SSD disks. So I/O is extremely fast. Um, memory is fast. Everything is fast in this little devil machines here. I'm always surprised how fast they are. Uh, let's just do a max rates here. Um, yeah, 74 MIPS, but this, this machine is able to run, I think, 250 to 300 MIPS easily. Uh, and uh, as I've seen as many as 9,000 uh, IOs per second while doing 250, 300 MIPS. Um, this Intel machines are really, really fast. Um, so you're, this is the difference of multi uh, of, of, of multi threading and versus CPU performance versus throughput. And it's important to understand the three things are playing together. If you have more throughput, you can do more workload at the same time. And if you have faster machines, if you have faster CPUs, you can finish any workload faster. Um, and multi threading is a software that uses more than one CPU, ideally, um, well. And then you obviously have to take care of locking and that kind of stuff inside your application. So um, again, um, it's important to understand that what was, with this simple, simple change of configuration went from one CPU to two CPUs. It's absolutely safe. I've been doing this for years. Uh, MBS 3.8 officially supports more than one CPU. In fact, supports two CPUs 
fine. It's guaranteed to work. So there's no reason with today's multi-core machines not to have more than two CPU, more than one CPUs enabled, or two, or two CPUs enabled in TK4 because um, your 3.8 MBS 3.8 will handle it just fine. So this is all I wanted to show for today. And as I said, soon I will show uh, how to do multi-threading in PL1. I don't know how to do it in COBOL, and I actually don't think that COBOL uh, that came with, that comes with TK4 is able to do multi-threading or multitasking, as IBM calls it. But we'll look into multitasking for PL1. So this is all for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you soon on uh, the uh, Moshix mainframe channel. If you like this video, please uh, press on the thumbs up button. And uh, please do subscribe to my Moshix channel so you can get notifications of uh, future video releases. Thank you and goodbye.